Okay, I have gotten a lot of requests to break down what's going on with the writer strike. If you've watched the news recently, you've probably heard the tease or seen the headline, what this could mean for your favorite shows. And of course, I'm gonna talk about that, but I also wanna talk about what these writers want and ultimately why you should care. Full disclosure before we begin, I am a writer for the television industry. However, I work on the news side of things. Uh, so I am not represented by WGA. I am in a different union. However, I do want to make clear that uh, one of the corporations on the other side of the bargaining table is my employer. And I also have worked for another employer on that list as well. All of this to say that I am here to educate. I am here with the purpose of educating and entertaining. My views on this subject and any commentary I make do not represent the actions or the views of my employer. Uh, I am an entertainer when I'm off the clock and that is what I'm doing here. So just wanna try to make that clear first and foremost. So let's begin with a brief history lesson. If you've ever heard the saying, history repeats itself, that's also the case here. The last writer strike occurred in 2007 and lasted a full 100 days. All of late night television shut down, prompting some hosts to pay the salaries of their writing staff in the face of layoffs. And it also prompted Conan O'Brien to do just insane bits to fill the time. That's a good spin, that's a good spin. Oh yeah! Oh! You probably heard this before, but some scripted fiction shows were definitely impacted by the strike around this time as well. Seasons of The Office, Pushing Daisies, Friday Night Lights, Prison Break, and most notably Heroes were definitely impacted in terms of length, but from what I understand, a change in quality as well, although obviously that is pretty subjective based on who you ask. In some cases, the quality of the shows actually improved when writers were allowed to regroup once the strike was over. Most notably, Jesse Pinkman stayed alive through Breaking Bad because of the writer strike. He initially was supposed to be killed off after season one, but that plot point was revised after the break happened. Who, who are we gonna kill off? I was gonna kill off this gentleman right here. Thank God for the right strike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, writers! Once the strike ended, the writers had secured a contract that allowed them to do their job while making ends meet, you know, a basic ask for the wealthiest country in the world. However, as we'll get into, that the world that the WGA writers had negotiated in back in 2007 no longer exists. Okay, so let's start with the basics. The Writers Guild of America represents thousands of scripted television and film writers across the country. The Guild has been negotiating with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which is a group that represents these organizations here. So the AMPTP represents the big streamers and studios, and the Guild represents the writers who write these shows. Like any union contract negotiation, the writers have a list of demands that they would like worked into their next agreement. It's worth noting here, and we'll get into this more later, that this this is the first major renegotiation and strike in 15 years, and since the last one, the entertainment space has changed significantly, so most of these demands are accounting for that. The Guild has written a list of their demands versus what AMPTP is proposing. It's been updated as of May 1st, but I'll break down a few of the key points now. The first demand here is pretty straightforward. TV writers do not get paid very well, and media and studios have done a really great job of convincing people that this is not the case. In fact, most TV writers barely get paid enough to make ends meet. A viral example going around right now is the story of a 28-year-old writer on the critically acclaimed FX series The Bear who went to the WGA awards with a negative bank account. So why is this the case? Well, the obvious factors are there, like the cost of living and the fact that all of this work is centered in pretty much just New York or Los Angeles, two very expensive places to live. But a lot of what writers do doesn't actually get pocketed by them at the end of the day. To get more of a perspective on this, I spoke with PT, a writer's PA on Netflix's The Night Agent. But basically the idea that like, oh, writers make X amount a week, um, uh, it, it depends on what you're talking about, but it could be up to like $5,000. Um, and therefore like they're being overpaid or they're living in lives of luxury. And that's not true, especially for lower level writers, because what you have to take into account is you're paying your agent, you're paying your manager, you have to have a lawyer, you have to have an accountant, um, you're paying some of the highest taxes in the country. Um, and if, especially like if you're working in an 11 week room as like a staff writer, so like the lowest level, you're probably, and you, you aren't getting like any other work besides that 11 week room, like your total take home pay is 
probably less than 20,000 a year. Another one of the big things that the union is fighting for is a fair agreement when it comes to residuals. Residuals used to be a big contributing factor to writers getting paid accurately for their work. So anytime a show re-aired anywhere on cable, the writers on that show would take a cut of that money. Residuals were really helpful to give writers a more consistent income because TV writing jobs aren't always consistent. If a show lasts for one or two seasons, you're out of a job after like a year. On top of that, streamers tend to be even more inconsistent with episode orders. On a cable show, you used to be guaranteed at least like a 22 episode season to work on, and on streaming, a studio could order just 8 to 10 with no residual money to bolster any of it. In addition to the residuals argument, the WGA argues that another major sticking point is the idea that studios are trying to eliminate the concept of the writer's room and turn screenwriting into more of a gig economy profession. Here's a clip of Adam Conover from Adam Ruins Everything explaining what that means. So the studios are trying to eliminate the writer's room. You're probably familiar with the term, the writer's room. This is a room that's existed for decades where writers get together and break a story and write scripts. The companies are trying to eliminate it. They're trying to make the room smaller. They're trying to employ us on a freelance basis. Uh, they'd rather we just stay home and email scripts in and they pay us a fee every once in a while. And we can't make a living that way. And finally, one of the other major points I want to briefly touch on here is the use of artificial intelligence. I'm going to go more in depth on this in a few minutes, don't worry, but it's a hot button issue in terms of criticism being thrown at WGA members right now, but the union wants to put limits on the studio's ability to train. <laughs> That's my cat, Juno. Oh my god. Hey everyone, this is Juno. Juno hates uh, anti-labor practices, right Juno? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I know. The union wants to put limits on how the studio is able to train AI to write TV shows. AI is nowhere near this level now, as I'll show you shortly, but it's a proactive measure to ensure that studios don't quite literally replace writers with robots. In the interest of fairness, let's talk about the counter argument to what the Writers Guild is proposing. Let's start with the latest statement from the AMPTP. The AMP presented a comprehensive package proposal to the Guild last night which included generous increases in compensation for writers as well as improvements in streaming residuals. The AMP also indicated to the WGA that it is prepared to improve that offer, but was unwilling to do so because of the magnitude of other proposals still on the table that the Guild continues to insist upon. The primary sticking points are mandatory staffing and duration of employment guild proposals that would require a company to staff a show with a certain number of writers for a specified period of time, whether needed or not. So when it comes to union negotiations, generally there are two sides that come to the table and no one really knows what goes on in the room but them. WGA could be more accurate with their statements or for all we know AMPTP could be more accurate with theirs. So let's focus on some facts here. Streamers like Netflix and HBO Max want you to think that ever since the pandemic they've been hurting for money and that is at first glance believable because of the sheer volume of questionable decisions they make business-wise on a quarterly basis. However, as Adam does a good job of explaining explaining in this CNN interview, that simply isn't reality. So I'd point out the fact that David Zaslav, the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, which is, you know, the parent company of the network I'm talking to you on right now, was paid $250 million last year, a quarter of a billion dollars. That's about the same level as what 10,000 writers are asking him to pay all of us collectively, all right? Oh. Oh hey, oh hey, oh hey, I didn't I didn't see you there. I was just catching up on some uh some light reading. Uh I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this away for now. But no matter how many numbers you throw at the wall here in terms of the very obvious inequity between those at the top of the content pyramid and those who actually make the content, there is a pure ideological difference that many people can't really seem to get over. In the grand scheme of things, many people believe that creative work isn't valued or viewed as real work. I mean, these guys here would know, considering that they all started out as failed screenwriters or actors who couldn't cut their teeth in the entertainment industry and found conservative grifting to be much more profitable. But for real, if this is the value that you hold when it comes to the folks who work in movies and television, trust me, I've encountered a lot of them, then it becomes impossible to see the WGA as a group of real people like you and me who are making more than reasonable demands from these billion dollar companies whose CEOs could resolve this with 
one check and not even break a sweat writing the number down. It's called class warfare and some of these companies benefit from you thinking this way. Whether you want to believe it or not, creative work really is work. I mean, pop culture can be used as a way to unwind and unplug from the depressing news of the day, and movies and television are great ways to find bonds with others or just simply enjoy some time to yourself. That doesn't come in a vacuum. A lot of these properties that we love so much are made by real people who put a lot of heart into what they do. And whether or not you think the work they do is legitimate, I would argue that they do deserve to be compensated fairly. And if your issue isn't the fact that creatives are making more money, rather that they're just making more money than you, well, welcome to the bubble of class consciousness. I'm happy you're here. And don't worry, the television and film industry is not the only place that this is currently happening. The next bit of criticism I want to get into here is that these writers are seen by some folks as the liberal Hollywood elite who don't put out good art and haven't in the last five or ten years, and that ChatGPT could easily do their jobs. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of corporations out there that want that last part to be true. And for the first part, I would simply say that a lot of the rushed, uninspired projects that you see coming out of Hollywood right now are not because of untalented writers, but rather because of the studio execs who are interested in making lots of money, even if it means cutting corners in terms of the actual quality of the material. This you can replace writers with robots and no one would know the difference argument bothers me to no end because sure that might be true in like 10 years from now and that's why WGA is trying to be proactive about it but to prove why that's a ridiculous fucking idea in the present day I devised a little experiment. You see, what I decided to do is pick a scene from Succession and then ask ChatGPT to write me a similarly length one-page dialogue scene with the same characters from the succession scene that I picked. I formatted these scenes the same way so that they were both indistinguishable visually. I then showed them to my boyfriend who has not seen succession to see if he could be fooled by the chat GPT script. And here's what happened. One day I'm gonna remember that I can't flip this fucking camera, but- um, They really like should figure that out. I know, this is Brian, uh, for those who don't know him. But you, you should. Most of you do. He is he has been on the channel before. So Brian has never seen Succession. First of all, what's wrong with you? A lot. Yeah, fair. Okay. And so basically, what I did is I took a script from Succession and a Chat GPT written script with the same characters. I painstakingly formatted them so that they look the same, and I just put them in a different color. So there's the blue script and the red script and Brian is going to try to tell which one was written by a robot. Do you accept this challenge? I don't think I have a choice. No, you don't. But, yeah. A few moments later. Okay, so Brian has read through the blue script and the red script. Which one do you think is real? Uh, I'm gonna say the blue script was real. The blue script is in fact real. It was, I don't know if you're gonna show it in the video. Yeah, I'm gonna show them both on the screen and I'll provide them in the description down below so you can read them full. But like, yeah, like you could just, that felt like, I haven't seen the show, but like that felt like a real conversation that, you know, people have with like the curse words and the uh, like, you know, kind of sporadic thoughts of it all. Like it wasn't, and the red script is very like, it's just plain. There's like no. First of all, there's no curse words. I guess can AI not curse? I don't know. Thing? Actually, I've done this test uh, a couple times before this, and it hasn't put any curse words in it. And it's just like <laughs> it just it feels very robotic. Like so, Dad wants us all together for a meeting today. Uh, maybe he's finally decided to name me the rightful heir. I'm gonna have go on go on a limb and say like no one's ever said that in Succession in no, all four seasons. I don't think so. Like, not unironically. That's like AI being like, oh, I know the show is about people competing to be the heir of a company, so I'm just gonna say that in the script. Um, well, that was awful. <laughs> Solidarity with the writers, fucking. Oh my god, if anyone thinks AI can replace writers, like, shut the fuck up. We, we support WGA in this house. Yeah. Squidward, the robots are running the Navy! Not the Navy!
All of this to say that we should not be cheering on the great AI replacement, because as a working class person, it never ever is going to be used in your favor. If you're cheering on the hypothetical elimination of a writer's job, don't be surprised when they come for your accounting job or your marketing coordinator job next, Liam or Sean or Brad, fucking Chase, I don't know. And finally, let's talk about what this does actually mean for you. Depending on how long the strike lasts, things may look a little different for sure. All of Late Night has shut down, SNL stopped production, live award shows are probably going to have some issues, and those are some immediately noticeable things. But what studios are hoping for is that they have enough content to outlast the strike. So for example, Succession, Ted Lasso, and Barry are three of the most popular shows airing right now, and they aren't actively being impacted by this because those seasons are wrapping up and they've already been produced and are just airing. But they're also in their final season, so those are content minds that studios and streamers can't exactly hold on to forever. What's going to be impacted more is the backlog of shows that are currently in production. Abbott Elementary and House of the Dragon are recent examples that we know of so far. If the 2007 strike is any indication, these shows will still keep getting made, they may just look a little different. Or maybe they won't, but the process of getting to the final product will have changed drastically depending on how long the strike actually continues. If you want to support the Writers Guild, weaponizing your viewing habits in this case doesn't really help much unless you're canceling your streaming members memberships altogether. Um, but another thing that um, that my heart has been warmed by to see people do is cancel canceling their streaming accounts and when they do and they ask for the reason they go down to other and say some variation of uh, support that I support the WGA fucking pay your writers don't want to live with reality TV I want X show back and it's your and you're the one keeping it from me more direct things you can do um, donating to the entertainment community fund. Now that doesn't support just the writers, like that's meant to support like the broader entertainment community and the funds go more towards people who um, really need it, which like um, could be writers depending on their situation. But you know, there, there will inevitably be PAs, um, other people who work on set, set builders, who are going to be hurt by this and the guild recognizes that and they've put it out there that they want to help the broader community since they aren't the enemy the studios are. Strike Pizza Fund, that's relatively straightforward. They do buy things besides pizza, but that's just an easy, easy strike food. Um, apparently there's a, also a strike coffee fund, also straightforward. However, and this is more of a folks in the industry thing, I guess, what we don't want to do is cross the picket line or scab. Have you been trying to break into screenwriting forever and you think that this is your big break? False, beat it, scram, do not pass go. This is not the opportunity that you think it is and these companies are exploiting you until they no longer have use for you as a warm body in a room. Ultimately, what I want to communicate is that you're going to see a lot of conflicting information about this strike within the next few weeks and months. And of course, no matter what side it's coming from, ask questions and do your homework. But believe me when I say there are entire teams out there dedicated to making sure that misinfo gets out into the internet, painting the writers as anything but what they actually are. People. Just like you. Just like me. Except they get to write Tariq's raps. If somebody try to give you drugs, punch them in the face. If somebody try to give you drugs, punch them in the face. Like... Thanks so much for watching. Uh, much love and solidarity to the folks at WGA. Thank you for watching this video. I have more content coming out soon, and I'll see you next time. Crazy, crazy.